Hi guys, Lisa here. Today I will be showing you something that has been requested a bunch of times, and that is how I make my journals with a soft wrap cover and exposed binding with a French link stitch. I'm in no way an expert in book binding, but this has been working for me so far and I like the way it looks. So if you wanna learn how I do the exposed French link stitch with this type of cover, please keep on watching and let's just get right into it. All right, here is what you'll need. The paper you want to use. I'm using 28 sheets of leftover handmade paper in four different colors. Your thread of choice. For this I'm using purple nylon thread, but most of the time I go for linen thread, but I like this color more. Thicker thread is recommended for this. A needle. You can use a straight needle, but I prefer a curved one. Some scrap paper to create your templates with. A pen and pencil. And a ruler, but I forgot to show that one. Something to poke into, this can also be a sponge or something. You also want something to poke with, I forgot to show that as well. I use an awl, but you can also use a thick needle. The fabric for your cover. I am using fake leather. You can use whatever you want, but you want it to be thick and strong. And then, you will also want to have a closure. I will be using a button, but you can also just use a string or any other type of closure really. Be creative. And lastly, this is optional, you can use a bone folder to fold the edges with. You want to start with creating signatures. Those are groups of pages. Take your stack of paper. This is mine. I picked papers from my leftover stack of handmade sheets. These all have small issues, like some are too thin, others have creases, and some are just lumpy. But in theory, they can still be used. You want to take a sheet and fold it in half. With handmade paper, if you choose not to cut the edges straight, this can be a little tricky to get right, because the paper isn't always straight. That's okay, that's how I prefer most anyways, but you will want to spend a little more time to align everything. You can use your bone folder to flatten the edge, or just your finger. You want to do this with all of your pages. For me, that is 28 times. I will be creating 7 signatures of 4 pages each, so each signature gets one color. So I already organized them like that. It's up to you how many signatures you want to make with how many pages. I would not recommend to use more than 5 pages per signature though, but how thick you make your journal is of course completely up to you. Now I have each page folded, I can group them together. I fold them open and slide them into each other, then close them as a group. That's a signature. Do this with all the groups. I want all the pages to be in a random color order, so I make sure to change up how I place them. Once you have done that, you can stack all the signatures on top of each other in the order you wish, and that will be your text block. Exciting! Now comes the most complicated part, and that is creating the templates. You will need two templates. The first one is a template for the holes in the spine of your signatures. You want to get a sheet of scrap paper and make this the size of your paper. Fold this in half exactly like you did with your pages, because the fold of that page will be where you are putting your markers for the holes. This is how your template will sort of look. I will not give you exact measurements because you don't need exact measurements, it will all depend on the sizes of your paper. It comes down to this, you want two holes on each side with some distance from the edge, and then you want two evenly spaced lines in between those two holes. The lines are imaginary, you will only be putting holes at the end of each line. If you are using larger paper, you might want to create 3 lines, maybe even 4. That's up to you. You can measure this all exactly if you want, but as long as you are using a template, it doesn't need to be exact. It just needs to be the same for each signature. So, make sure to mark which side goes up, so you hold it the same each time. I would also recommend writing the name of your stitch on the template so you can use it again another time. The second template is for your cover. You again want a piece of scrap paper the size of your pages. Fold it in half. This time, the crease is actually representing the bottom signature of your text block, and will help you to keep things from going wonky. Measure while pressing down slightly the average width of your signatures and the total width of your text block. Then, recreate your text block on your template. Like this, I have 7 lines, each line representing one signature, and the spaces between the line is the same as the width of my signatures. The bottom line is the crease of the template. Again, don't worry about being too precise, especially when you're using stretchy fabric, then your cover will work with you. Now you want to take the first template you created and line it up with your top line. Make sure to mark which side is up. Then mark on the line where each hole in your signature goes. Do the same with the bottom line, make sure to not flip a template. Then connect the markings. 
your template should now look something like this. On all the places where the lines cross, this is where the holes are going to be. You want to mark this clearly, so place a dot with a pen on all of these places. Then make sure to label it. And now you have finished your templates, so you can go ahead and start poking those holes. Take your first signature and open it in the middle. Align your template with the signature, making sure the creases are neatly against each other. Then place them on your mat or your sponge or whatever you're using, make sure not to move them off of each other, and poke the holes. Remove the template and repeat with your other signatures. Then your text block should look something like this. Now measure out where in your cover fabric your text block will be placed and mark this with pencil. Align the crease of your second template with the line you just drew. If you want to secure it in place without damaging the leather, you can use pins on the places where you are going to be making holes anyways. Then go ahead and poke those holes. It might be hard to tell on camera, but those holes are definitely there. Now for the fun part, the binding. Take your thread. You want to measure out one and a half times the amount of signatures times the length of your text block. So I am measuring out one and a half of seven is around 11 times the length of the text block. Then I thread my needle, but don't make any knots. Flip over all your signatures except the bottom one. You will be binding each signature to the cover one by one. You first want to go from the outside through the bottom right hole of the leather and leave a tail. Then go through the aligning hole, so the right one, of the signature and pull all the way through making sure that the tail is still out there. Then go out through the second hole of the signature and then through the aligning hole in the leather, pulling it tight. Then you go to the next hole in the same roll again, through the letter, and then again through the signature. You keep doing this, matching the holes of the signatures with the holes of the leather. Then when you reach the end, you go up one row, and once you go through the letter, you add a signature, and go through the first hole of that one. Then again, out the second hole and through the leather. Now comes the whole point of this stitch. Naturally, you are going to want to go to the next hole in the row. However, before you do that, you are going to link underneath the line below that, towards the direction you are stitching. As you can see, that creates this cool cross pattern. Then you can go through that hole and again through the signature. You want to do the same when you are outside again. You want to go to the next hole in the row, but first you loop underneath the line below before going into that hole. 
It's really that simple, but it looks great. Now, when you reach the end of the second row, it's time to work away the tail of when you started. You can knot these two together to secure it. Because we are leaving the binding exposed, we want to bring this to the inside. So I'm attaching a small needle to the little tail and then bringing that tail through that hole to the inside. And then pull until the knot appears. Tuck the end under the stitch and cut off the excess. This is the same principle for if you run out of thread and want to start a new thread. Just tie the ends together and bring it to the inside. Now you can continue with your normal needle and go through that next hole above, through the leather, through the signature. Then when you reach that point again for the link stitch, it's the same every time. You first loop underneath the previous line in the direction you are stitching and then go into that next hole. Keep repeating this. One last thing you want to know is when you reach the end of the line, instead of going straight to the hole above, you want to go underneath the stitch we created below it. And then to make it even more interesting, I like to go through that own loop to create a little knot because it looks fun. Then you can go through the hole above. That's basically all there is to it. Just link underneath the thread to create a cross pattern. And before moving a line up, create a little knot by hooking underneath the stitch below. Keep adding signatures until you reach the end of your last one. Then just create a knot like normal. And instead of going one up, you go back inside and tie it off on the stitch there. Tuck it under and cut off the excess. Boom! That's it! Now all is left is the finishing touches. I cut the letter to the correct size and round off the corners. I also want to give the flap a fun shape. I cut it off off camera in the shape of an envelope flap. Then I sew on the button with the leftover thread. I actually ended up changing the way the button was turned after I shot this because I thought it looked better. Then a little slit on the flap and the journal is done. Here it is in all its glory. I personally love exposed binding and it really adds to the handmade feel and gives you an opportunity to play around with colors. You can really make this stitch your own, so I hope you are inspired to create something yourself now, because I definitely enjoyed creating this.
So there we go, we have created this gorgeous cute little journal with the exposed French link stitch. I hope you have learned a bunch and you can now replicate the stitch. I think it looks great, the binding looks adorable and the colors of the pages match so well. I can't believe we actually made this out of scrap paper. So I was thinking in honor of my one year paper making anniversary, which is this month, I would be giving this journal away to one of you guys as a thank you for all the support you guys have given me for the past year. It's been incredible, thank you so so much. If you think you would like to have this journal, you can head on over to my Instagram at nevermindlisa. I will be hosting the giveaway over there. And all you need to do is tell me what you would like to use this journal for. And I'll pick one winner that I think will give this journal a nice new home. It's open worldwide, so don't worry about it. You can also nominate a friend or a family member. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. Just let me know in the comments and I'll pick a winner at the end of the month. Thanks again for watching this video and for watching me for the past year. It's been incredible. I've had so much fun. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you will continue to follow me if you want to see more of me, you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at NeverMedLisa on both. And make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my videos on here. And for now, uh, thank you again, and I will see you next time. Bye bye! Can you tell me if it's in focus? I'm just gonna assume it's in focus. No! I forgot my journal. I gotta refocus.